I know a thing or two about email, but then it took me another five, six years actually to realize um, that Web3 and actually blockchain is the thing to go. Um, and that actually we were sending every day about uh, and everybody wants to be the identity provider. So again, if you look into Web1, into Web2, nobody has actually managed to be the identity provider in Web1 or Web2. Introducing Ethermail, email as a wallet. Ethermail transforms your email into a hub of endless possibilities. Forget about complex wallet setups. Use your Apple or Google account and set a security password to create your Web3 email in under a minute. Turn your inbox into a treasure chest. Use the built-in MoonPay app to buy crypto with common payment methods. Now your email not only connects you with people, but to a wealth of opportunities. Want to buy fancy NFTs but nervous about how complicated everything is? Thanks to our TX Ray feature, whenever you initiate a purchase, instead of an immediate transaction, you receive a detailed email in your Ethermail inbox, outlining the specifics of what you're about to sign or purchase. Send and receive digital funds as seamlessly as sending an email. Paymail's two-factor transactions will make sure your crypto will always arrive to the correct recipient. Ethermail is not just transforming your email into a wallet. It's simplifying your interaction with the digital world. Try email as a wallet today. Hello and welcome to Voice of Crypto a podcast where we talk about crypto, Web3 and everything in between. And uh, today I have a very special guest and uh, he's building something special. So welcome on the podcast, Gerald. Hey, Abhishek, very nice meeting you and hello to everybody. So, so Gerald, the first question is, is which I ask all my guests is uh, how you got into Web3, how you got into crypto, what do you remember that specific accident or incident which which pushed you into Web3. So I'd love to hear a story and what has been your background before uh, Web3. Very cool, yeah. Yeah, actually, I actually do remember very vividly. Um, so three words about myself. So I've been 22 years actually an entrepreneur. I built in the Web1 space, in the Web2 space, in the Web2 space, I built a large e-commerce business, which we sold to Amazon in 2011. And in that actually we were sending every day about uh, 11 million emails. So I know a thing or two about email, but then it took me another five, six years actually to realize um, that Web3 and actually blockchain is the thing to go. So the first time I actually started looking into it was actually uh, on an event where a crazy guy in a gold suit uh, try to convince everybody that Bitcoin is a new thing. And that was 2016 or 17. I didn't believe it, unfortunately. So I was stupid. But then actually 2019, uh, 2020, actually also, um, I got actually getting into contact with investing into companies and advising them. And one of those uh, companies was actually a, a business where um, they sold NFTs of very famous people, basically. And it was um, an NFT which was sold um, from uh, one of the main actors from a money heist um, um the big uh, netflix series and mm. basically in that in that event within 60 seconds they sold about a million dollars worth of nfts uh, just like this and i thought okay wow <laughs> i'm missing out on something uh, i really have to go into this world um, and, and and start building and that's exactly where eventually i started moving into first as an investor again with a buzz on a blockchain network and then actually creating together with shant uh, the company Ethermail. Correct, correct. So, so from a web one to web two, and then selling your company to a big conglomerate like Amazon, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have learned a lot of lessons as an entrepreneur. And yeah. what, what, are, what are some of these wisdom and insights which you're building in currently, and what are you building exactly currently? Tell us, tell us about that. Yeah. So, um, Ethermail essentially um, is um, um, so I, I have a view on um, on trends and and basically on on what to focus in these trends and and how um, you actually can identify um, as an entrepreneur something which is really relevant. So, I think the first one is important. Um, every business, whatever you build, essentially takes the same amount of time, right? twenty four seven. <laughs> so, all your life as an entrepreneur is focused on it. So, I always say um, you have to find something which is very big and big enough. To really satisfy um, your desire if you want to do something significantly big and the beauty about these technological shifts what we are seeing in web one and web two and now in web three is that basically everything can be thought new with new technology of course the world doesn't change from one day to another you can always say well it's just something existing with new technology but then eventually it is changing because of course new technology applied also means new business models and everything so 
And if you look at um, the mega topics, um, which basically in every um, Web 1, Web 2, and Web 3 um, are the biggest um, uh, um, uh, topics, essentially, one of those is actually communication. Because communication, everybody is doing it, and every day. So if you can find something in communication, then you um, have a very big opportunity because everybody in the whole world potentially can use it and then everybody probably also every day will use it. Um, and that was the, the, the starting point. Um, and that actually uh, re, um, kind of merged very nicely with some experiences we had because we um, were, were supporting these NFT and token launches. And then we saw there was always a big issue around communication with token NFT holders. Mm -hmm. You launch a project where you don't know anymore where, who your token holders are, then they start buying and selling. They lose. They they leave the Telegram and the Discord channels, and then basically, well, you don't know who to, how to address basically your audience. And then my my co-founder Shand, I can see you also. He came up with the idea. He is a he's a technical genius and and also business guy. Um, came up with it and saying, well, what actually if we just connect a wallet with an email um, and we use the existing email protocol, and at the same time we use the benefits of the blockchain um, and of a wallet. And of course, a wallet means payment it means identification it means encryption and then all of a sudden this email becomes a much better email um mm. because basically a web through email with which you can pay with which you can identify yourself and that's exactly what we've been uh, starting to build about two years a bit more than two years now with ethermail the leading email web3 platform essentially with millions of users um allowing people to really enter the web3 space with their email about adults of course for existing users to stay in contact with their projects um, via a very existing and, and, and known um, communication channel. Understood. So, so you are saying if I have a if I have a particular email, I can attach this email with a wallet, and then I can go on the platform, and then I can start using it. Correct. So there's basically two scenarios. Scenario number one is you do have a wallet already. Um, if you have a wallet, and for the moment we're focusing on the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, EVM uh, 20. So if you have a wallet, you also already do have actually an email with us because we've created all possible email addresses. Oh, okay. and, then, and then basically you might actually, when you go on our platform with your wallet and connect, you might already have emails because projects might have sent you already emails, basically. So that's okay. if you have an existing wallet, because of course on the wallet communication channel, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to communicate with you um, mm -hmm. until now. Um, and then the second one is if you don't have a wallet essentially, so if you're a Web2 user and you would like to enter the Web3 world, you just basically sign in with your Gmail and we create for you a non-custodial wallet and the Ethermail email basically at the same time. And then you can basically use your Gmail, let's say, as a wallet across the, um, the universe, buy on OpenSea, for example, via the email, um, your first token or NFT. Um, and that makes it, of course, much easier for the people to enter into the Web3 world. Well, I think that that's really a brilliant idea. And I think this is something which, which even mom can use, even if she yes. doesn't understand how to do all these complex transactions. But but if she has a wallet and then this this email. So probably this is this is the uh the next thing which which will actually bring in one which which everybody has been trying and i think mass adoption will come with something which is which is very simple like like what you guys are building so how has what what are some of the challenges which you faced during this journey and how have you been trying to solve these problems well, I mean, it's a typical thing, of course, building a business uh, is always a challenge. Um, on the one hand, you have all those technical challenges. Um, and we all know the blockchain is technologically still right, relatively complex. And to make it easy is a, yeah. is a big challenge in itself, basically. Um, of course, you have to find the right people because otherwise, well, if you don't have the, the people to build on this, then of course, you don't have a product. And then the typical things on, of course, uh, raising money. We were very lucky to have some, some very large investors like Greenfit and Fabric and Tim Draper supporting mm -hmm. us. Um, and eventually, I think people um, don't, I mean, forget that eventually it's all about building a real business. Um, it's, uh, it might be a different type of business in Web3 than in Web2 and Web1, but eventually it's um, finding the right people, finding the right idea market fit, and then, and then growing. And of course, at the beginning, um, we didn't know if it would stick, right? It, 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 it wasn't clear if there would anybody, anybody using it. So when we actually launched about two years ago, and then all of a sudden we had in the first months, actually 100,000 people signing up. We were, of course, super happy and, and surprised. And, and now even, I mean, every day between three and 10,000 people are signing up. Um, yeah. Last month, more than 200,000 people signed up. So, mm -hmm. so we are very happy now as a development because we see that there is really a potential for a very, very big market. And again, um, I've seen this in Web 1 and Web 2, basically. Um, the early adopters um, and, and the players in, 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 in new technological uh, developments 
have such a very big advantage because eventually um, the people are there from the beginning and, and people don't change. You still, for example, you still see people uh, using a Yahoo email, yeah, which is, is crazy if you think about it, but they are still there. And the same will happen in our opinion in Web3. We are still at a very small early stage, of course, if you look at global population who is using Web3, but we are very happy to be very early on and, and driving also traffic and, and mass adoption to this space. So, so, I mean, you said you have been seeing a uh, growth of users on the platform and it has been exponentially growing. Are you seeing certain kind of patterns in, team, in, in terms of geographies where you're getting most of your users or any typical age group? So what are those insights which, mm -hmm. which can be helpful for others as well? Mm -hmm. So, of course, um, uh, by definition, crypto is uh, relatively young, means uh, between 20 and 30 years old. It's more male than female. Um, it is uh, more also in, let's say, developing countries than in established countries. So uh, you, we would see a lot of adoption from, from companies like Vietnam, Indonesia um, and other countries. But then also interesting enough, if you look at total, for example, um, I think over the last 12 months, around 15% uh, or 20% of the traffic actually came from the US or North, North America. So you mm -hmm. do have regions which actually have a, a higher adoption rate also in industrialized countries, let's say. Um, but eventually it's of course a lot of people also from developing countries who are entering this space because they just see it as a way of how to uh, really kind of take over and, and technologically jump into the next development while they sometimes not even have a banking account for example um, but overall um, it's a very young and dynamic space of course and that's great because people are technologically very open to test and try new things Okay. And, and does does your business or your users also has some sort of seasonal effect in terms of when crypto is highly searched or when it is a bull market or because of a lot of new political changes? So mm -hmm. do you think certain patterns coming in from there as well? Um, so um, the, the, the users on our end is at least the feeling I have is, is it, they're not really influenced by short term political um, developments or regulation or whatever, because we are not, let's say we are a little bit of an in between technology, right? We are not really focused on, on tech, on the blockchain technology as a need to, to operate. We could in theory. Um, operate uh, email <laughs> emails without without the blockchain. Well, of course, mm -hmm. it would be a different story, but still, but we are not really in the regulation game. Let's say so, if we stay out of that, um, and people are just curious because eventually they they of course see the benefit in it. And 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 it's important to understand that there is kind of two two important parts why users are essentially signing up. So the one part is mm -hmm. to use it, of course, for the personal communication and the C two C communication. But that is actually the smaller part. The bigger part is people want to get in contact and in touch basically with companies and projects who are basically updating their information on token and NFTs. But then even more important, and that's the core of the business model also, of course, what we're doing, people get rewarded for their time and, and basically interacting uh, with promotional emails. And, and that is actually what we have seen going completely through the roof. Um, because on two ends, on the one end, we have a lot of customers now, um, big companies like Consensus and so on, who basically are advertising with us because they're interested to get new users. And then at the same time, of course, we have a very specific target audience, specifically targeted and, and very much um, uh, geared towards uh, Web3 projects. Um, and then you look at click rates and conversion rates and compare this, for example, to I don't know, Google search or Telegram or, or, or Twitter or whatever, we are by a factor of 10 more effective essentially of how to get users and, and get right the right users to the right project, basically. Um, mm -hmm. And as users get rewarded for this, they have a very big interest in it because they, of course, see, wow, my time is worth is worth something. And of course, eventually, the more they interact and transact, the more value also is generated and the more they receive. Understood. Interesting. And, and you know, the whole the whole concept and the whole ethos of Web3 has been uh, and there's, and then, as they say, there's always a dilemma between your privacy and your security. Mm -hmm. And something which you are handling, I think, is mm -hmm. in line between protecting my privacy as when I'm using uh, an email and mm -hmm. also being secure when I'm also putting in my my MetaMask for for, for example. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so how, how challenging it has been, and what are some of the steps which you and your team has taken to to you know to balance between both these uh, dilemmas? 
Mm -hmm. So the one, um, uh, it's a very two different concepts, of course, right? Privacy and security. So the one is the privacy part, which uh, really um, uh, focuses on the question of to whom do I give my identity and who can, who can know who I am? And then the second part to it is actually how much of what I am am I willing to share with the mm -hmm. communication platform? So the first element, basically, um, the identity. Well, in our case, of course, it's 100% because essentially at the beginning, especially, oh, not at the beginning, but uh, people are just a code, right? They're a zero X, whatever, at mm -hmm. ethermail.io. So nobody would ever know who I essentially am, unless, of course, I share my credentials and my name with my wallet connected, and people could in theory find out who I am. And we do support actually um, Ethereum name services so people can actually have an alias and so on. But that takes care of the privacy part and then connected to this, to this, and that's the second part. Essentially, it's about encryption and who is able and allowed to read emails and content. So, other than, for example, um, Google, and uh, we cannot read anything what's on the email. So, everything is encrypted end to end. Um, and that's, of course, ensures that there's a very big uh, uh, privacy element. Uh, in it uh, because well we just don't know what's in the email essentially and then number two is around uh, the part around security and that has to do with login and so on you mentioned already eventually you log in with your with your wallet with your metamask uh, mm -hmm. if you choose to do so and that by itself is is is, is relatively secure unless well you lose your <laughs> your password or your <laughs> your access code then it's too secure um mm -hmm. and at the same time of course if you choose to go to google then you're a little bit in that old system because eventually you have to rely that Google, for example, is secure. But I think that at the moment can can probably be ensured that Google is secure and that you cannot hack it. Okay. And then, I mean, taking the conversation forward from here, a lot of uh, government compliances as well as, and especially when you're looking at GDPR or in, in, in you yeah. in which you have to maintain privacy and you are dealing with, with something which is uh, very close and which, which could be, uh, you know, quite hackable. There are a lot of hackers so how how you have been building based on the compliances how are you navigating all the compliances across the globe and uh, what 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 steps you have taken to to make it secure within the government framework mm -hmm. so um uh, we are european union based um so we our company is actually based out of out of Liechtenstein, which has been really playing uh, in europe the forefront or the leading role of how the token are regulated um, and actually the mika uh, regulation is very much also connected and, and built partly also on the Liechtenstein law. So from the beginning, we have said we don't want to go into, let's call it offshore centers, um, mm -hmm. because we believe that eventually our business has to do with trust and uh, companies who essentially will um, spend significant amounts of money with us. And that's why we chose to go into a very regulated environment uh, which um, which fortunately actually europe has, has has managed to do and i believe europe has a very big opportunity here because um if you look at globally the different regions europe probably is at this moment the most advanced uh, region with regard to clear regulation people know what's about what's allowed and what's not allowed so i'm not against regulation i'm i, I think worse is if you don't know what what you're what you're talking about so that's the typical thing in the us at the moment nobody knows what's going to come out of it so people are really afraid so once you know it then you basically are in that space and we have from the beginning played um, in accordance to the rule um with regards to the token for example it's a utility token it's approved by the fma in Liechtenstein, um and we basically have made sure that we are getting all the tick box check boxes essentially gdpr you already mentioned and so on to ensure that we stay compliant and are compliant um and that's that's where we how we have been operating and will also continue to operate. Interesting. And you spoke about uh, a sudden user growth. So, and I think this this product is something which, as I said, my mom could also use it if if, if yeah. she understands the uh, basic metamask. So, what what are the core pillars of how are you trying to educate people about this this interesting? Uh, and I would say it is it is somewhere between Web two and Web three, so that mm -hmm. it has it has the ease of Web two point five. But also has a secure usage of a web three. So, how are you educating users, and how are you getting more users about about the product? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Actually, so, so you you as you said correctly, we are this this weird, let's say, web two point five uh, uh, project, yeah. let's say, or product. You could, yeah, yeah, you you could you could argue because everybody knows email, and then people say, well, it's just an email. Okay, well, that's easy. So, so I think the first step is is getting your feet wet into web three. And mm. if you already have to make very complicated installations on your browser and all kinds of things, 
then mm. a web 2.5 or web 2 user interested in web 3 won't do it so your mother my mother well whatever they, they just wouldn't do it because it's too complicated mm. but if entering email if entering web 3 is as mm. easy as creating a new email then actually mm. that the first step is actually done so this is what we are trying to focus on entering mm. into into web 3 is as easy as creating a new email so you essentially sign it with your gmail you create the email for you and then actually we're in the process of building like a, an email based academy you could say where we step by step actually are going to educate people um uh, about benefits and then actually link out to um, actually great product podcast for example like yours could be an interesting one because eventually we're not trying to to be the content creator for the web3 world we believe there's a lot out there but essentially we can be a gateway in guiding people to the right uh, content and then basically showing them what's possible in, in the world of web3 and then I think the, in the end, it has to do with ease of transaction, let's say. So mm -hmm. um, take the example of, um, of buying, um, for example, uh, an NFT and OpenSea. Um, with our technology, and actually we're now just launching, about to launch, uh, signing with Ethermail, you essentially sign into any platform, um, and then you buy, for example, what, something. But then instead of a complicated pop-up with a complicated zero, zero, whatever, you don't know what you're signing thing, you actually get an email in your inbox. We will have screened the contract. Actually, it will have a ticket saying this contract is secure. It means this and this and this and this. And then I just sign in the email essentially, and I a have security that I'm I, I sign something which is which is which is safe. And number two, I also have a transaction history because then I know okay what I really did because very often at least for me it's like this. I look at my wallet. I look at transactions. Like what exactly did I do here? I don't remember anymore. And because email, of course, is a good communication channel that helps you to really ensure that you know what you're doing. Interesting. And and in, in Web3, I mean, the whole the whole Web3 is built upon a lot of collaborations and partnerships. So what has been your strategy and what partnerships which you have formed uh, to get more user base on the platform? Yeah, 100%. Eventually, there's a lot of um, a lot of wonderful projects out there. Um, and eventually, they will only work if they are seamlessly integrated. Because again, for the user, if, if I have to hop from one island to another island and then have to complicate it, change my, uh, I don't know, my, my gear or my, my appearance or whatever, people won't do it. So partnerships in this world, and that's, that's great, everybody has understood, is a very important thing. So we have, for example, partnered with um, all major layer two uh, blockchains, um, uh, BNB chain, Polygon, Phantom, mm -hmm. and so on and so on, um, Arbitrum. So, uh, so essentially, we basically base. We basically make sure that you can, um, within the ecosystem of the EVM20 for the moment, uh, system really seamlessly go and, and, and interact with all those different uh, blockchains. And then the second one is we're now in the process of building um, utility and partnerships where essentially also our token will be able to be used in, in more ecosystems. Um, and then also actually on the other side, allowing companies to build the apps um, in our ecosystem, which you can just essentially access very easily again also on our end. So on top of Ethermail, there could be other products also, which which can be launched if I have certain ideas. And yes. do they have to be relevant with 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 mail, email as a category, or there could be others others as well? Could be anything essentially. I mean, essentially, we are we are, we are communication identity mm -hmm. and and uh, and and traffic provider. You could argue. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, think about today at Google. I mean, Google is connected to all kinds of uh, products and services. That's exactly what we are what mentioning. Also, signing with Ethermail, for example, can be in any project, in any in any any infrastructure, basically. So, communication—that's the beauty—is a horizontal layer. It's a, 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 a applicable and relevant to anything. Correct. So you said Google. So I'm, I I I feel that Google is a benchmark where where Ethermail wants to go, and I think that's the same journey which we Google also started, also yeah. from a search engine, but they moved to mail. So is is that that the benchmark? Well, I mean, I think uh, you have some great companies in Web2. Let's, let's not kid ourselves, right? And I mean, again, these guys have proven that um, communication is a key driver in, um, in developing a business. Because again, it's, everybody is using, <laughs> or most of the people are using these services every day. And, and that makes it so wonderful um, that you basically have a communication infrastructure. Um, and <laughs> of course, Google in Web2 is a very relevant and, and very good company. Um, we would never discuss this. We, of course, try to become something similar in Web3 because, again, um, in every um, technological development, there's new opportunities for new companies. And we have seen this in Web1, we've seen this in Web2, and we'll see this in Web3. Um, and that's what we're trying to be.
relevant in in the new in the new world so so you are you're trying to dodge the questions again uh, <laughs> just kidding so yeah definitely uh, if ether mail can can grow google you know could could be a, a good success story from here uh, moving on to my next question i mean you you also spoke about uh, digital identity so it has been becoming a critical issue so how does ether mail is contributing to the concept of self sovereign identity and mm -hmm. what developments you you guys are picking up because the kind of things which you said is between under 30 they are they are very cautious about their identity yeah. and uh, i think that's a good category in which you're also talking so what what are the future developments which, which you would like to make a mail yeah so identity is the topic uh, for most of businesses and uh, that's good and bad because it means that everybody is trying to get a shot at it uh, and everybody wants to be the identity provider so again if you look into web 1 into web 2 nobody has actually managed to be the identity provider in web 1 or web 2 we still carry around our id passport whatever mm -hmm. it is which mm -hmm. has been issued by the government um you could argue somebody like um google um basically has somehow managed to be an identity because it's my email which i carry around and that's why every business in the world actually asks you for your email that's really your identity yeah if you if you look at any project in the world every company has on their side signed in with your email because everybody basically has an email essentially and that is i believe um the truth that nobody owns this identity right so there is of course the different providers but the protocol itself is free basically mm -hmm. so um we of course believe that email in web3 could again play this role because it is a ubiquitous um technology which has been around for a very long time 4.3 billion people do have it and do understand it so i think email has a very good opportunity and possibility to potentially become again also an identity of course you could argue well wallets are also somehow identity but then again wallet plus email is even better because you have a communication channel and then there is i think a logic of um identity one step further meaning where do i live who am i what is my my profile and so on because identity doesn't only mean login it also means who am i where do i live what's my income and everything else basically mm -hmm. um i believe that these things essentially will be um in my wallet um as nfts or some kind of other way of how basically i've created it um it is not a provider basically who is doing this but it's me who has it in my in my wallet essentially i might have used any kind of technology perhaps and then mm -hmm. i give access to other people to access this identity uh, in that moment of time when it's actually needed and then probably there is still that part around uh, government identity and everything i take a lot of time of course but there's no reason why i shouldn't carry in my wallet eventually also um a digital copy of my passport which is mm -hmm. um, just accessible and then again it's one piece in my wallet basically and my my choice of which type of identity i would like to have so mm -hmm. um Yeah, I mean, I think it's a super interesting in, interesting interesting discussion. It's it's still open out there. Um but I think again if we speak about identity, it's probably something which has to be in the hands of the users if it really has to be relevant. So it has to be really identity for me on my, in my wallet which I've created and nobody owns this basically. And then the second part as I said probably is government identity which going to stay. Okay. Okay. So while while we're talking about government, and we also spoke about, we also touched upon regulations. Uh, now in in 2024, 2023, AI has been the flavor of the season, and every yeah. EC, everybody has been talking about AI. Mm. Uh, and there have been a lot of projects on which blockchain plus AI has been used. So okay. what are your views? And you, being a seasoned entrepreneur, I'm sure you have seen a lot of narratives like this in last 20 of your role. Mm -hmm. entrepreneurial journey uh, what what do you think ai is is adding value in blockchain and are you guys also working on something which which is clubbing both these amazing technologies yes so um i believe eventually um the topic we are in right now is not blockchain or ai i believe it's web3 um, and if you look at what defines web3 or web1 or web2 you always have essentially three different layers you have a database layer you have an application layer and a presentation layer basically uh, this has moved from web1 to web2 
um, mm. different layers. Yeah, in Web One, it was the desktop. In Web Two, for example, uh, mm. it's the mobile phone. In Web Three, it's going to be most likely 3D glasses uh, in the future. Um, mm. So, so you essentially see on all those layers uh, different developments. Um, and actually, blockchain is the further de 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 evolution of cloud computing, basically moving in that data layer, and that's mm. the blockchain layer, essentially what we see in Web Three. Of course, with more features because it's not only data; it's also uh, actually money uh, and, and other things and also some kind of logic and then ai is actually somehow the application layer which in web3 will actually be uh, most likely be very relevant and that's how of course these two things interact very much and then if you think about ai and you think about um, one step further into robots and all these kind of things then it's of course eventually machines interacting with each other right because if you're honest about it at one moment we're going to have a machine economy, which very much is going to be governed by um, AI, which essentially are machines, you could argue, or intelligent machines. And these intelligent machines need ways of how to uh, properly communicate and interact with each other. The blockchain essentially is a decentralized ledger technology, which allows this. So um, that's where the connect uh, essentially is um, on these different layers. And then if you will look very specifically on how can AI play a significant role, for example, in our business, um, of course, eventually, um, our topic or our, our theory is we try. We are trying to provide a fair value to your inbox, basically, with consensual marketing, with a consensual marketing approach, where we are saying, well, in today's world, it's very difficult um, to target um, uh, advertisement um, specific to users because um, essentially the data is very much dispersed uh, on very different silos, and it has to do with the payment infrastructure that we have today. So, for example, today, my credit card, my MasterCard, my Visa or whatever, that's a silo. It's a, pi it's a payment silo. Um, mm -hmm. And the information what I'm buying is really only known to the bank, right? But it's Can not it? public, basically. So mm -hmm. um, that is a silo, um, which, of course, would definitely define significantly if that would be kind of public or semi-public or accessible, how, comp how companies could be potentially be targeting me. I mean, it would be the dream, right? I mean, everybody would say, listen, if I would know the credit card data of all people, essentially, I could make targeted advertisement, but to the point, because I would know that Abhishek yesterday bought a sandwich in that restaurant, uh, uh, which was, I don't know, a tuna thing. And oh, apparently he's a healthy guy. Uh, so then I'm going to send something out. It's a stupid example, right? But, but yeah. other examples, you, 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 you get the you get, you get, you get, you get. So in Web3, actually, this is going to happen because, of course, wallets are public domain. That means I am anonymous, but my wallet is public. So the interactions and transactions I do with my wallet are public. So I actually going to get in the future be targeted, and that's exactly what, what Ethernet is actually allowing, based on transactions that I provided that I allow it, right? Because I could say, I'm not interested, leave me alone. This is my mm -hmm. closed wallet, nobody can access me. Mm -hmm. But my wallet essentially, if I choose to open up my wallet and receive promotional emails and, and information on it, has a very rich history which allows me to target and of course ai essentially plays a significant role in this because ai will determine potentially what i'm most interested what i've been interested in the past what will i be interested in the future and then could actually proactively reach out and say oh jerry has uh, has basically bought um i don't know uh, um, a, a swimsuit and snorkeling things okay uh, yesterday oh he might be interested in actually doing a vacation um, uh, and, and actually uh, uh, go uh, on a trip. So then I could sell that data and say, okay, here is an offer for you, basically, because mm -hmm. apparently you are in that mood that you're perhaps going into a vacation. So and then, uh, again, it's not the best example, but gives yeah. you again the idea of forecasting. And then all of a sudden, um, I'm not sure if, you, if you've seen the, the movie Minority Report. Yeah, it's a Minority Report. You remember the movie where yeah. basically based on past yeah. behavior, predicting future, um, future activities, that's exactly what's going to happen. And because, again, this data is semi-public, based on uh, predictive behavior, then offers are going to be uh, given to me because the machine already knows what basically most likely I will do. And again, our protocol um, is a perfect example of how you can reach those people because we are connecting the wallet with the communication channel. So, so I, I understood now, I mean, it is also contextual advertising rather than me sitting and seeing something which I'm not interested in. It's, it's also based yes. on my own hobbies and, my, and the context in which I'm, I'm going to do something. So what would be the incentive for a, for a user to open up my, just, you mentioned that, you know, I can either give permission to open up my wallet or not. What would be an incentive for me as a user to open up my wallet? What do I get? What, what incentive do I have? 
So that's what we are doing today. That's the e the email token, the EMT that we have launched last week. <coughs> they essentially we give um, users email token as a reward for opening an email at this moment, right? That's that's the simplest thing. I open email, I get some. Of course, in the future it will be okay. How much I interact with a promotion email that basically will will define the promotion and the reward. And I might get I don't know 10, 20, 30 bucks to open an email because companies know that I'm very relevant. I have high income or whatever. And I most likely will buy. So I'm fine to pay HG Gary a very big amount to look at this promotion offer. Today I can't because I don't know. So that's why I have to have a shotgun approach as a as a as an advertiser. And that's why the whole thing around um, promotional emails and being paid for it doesn't ne never really work, but in the future it will work. Mm -hmm. So um this of course is something what I decide. So mm -hmm. if I don't want it, then I basically don't want it. But we're already seeing it today. Um, that we can give really relevant um, um, rewards basically for people. Um, and then the email token, that's important. We really have a value and money behind it because we essentially, whatever advertisement revenue we take, we take 50% and give it back to the user. So that's a very big incentive. And that also means we are buying back EMT from the market to give it back to the user. Um, right. And that's how this whole economy essentially is, is, is basically created. I think that's, that's really quite relevant, uh, Gerald. And I have met so many people in, in Web3 industry and these are new kids who just go for money and not thinking of what the real use case. And I think because you've already built businesses, you come with that kind of wisdom of creating a real business which has a real value and utility. Uh, a lot of our listeners are new entrepreneurs or who are yeah. getting into Web3. So what would be your advice of amazing work which you have done from so many years to these new entrepreneurs? <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, you, you you mentioned it already. I mean, the the the, the beauty and the beast, let's say, in new in new in new technology developments is always there's always gold diggers and there's always great opportunities to become rich, right? Fast. The the sad truth is, um, out of I don't know a thousand people, only five or ten actually, or perhaps fifty, manage to do it, and that's on the cost of the other nine hundred fifty. <laughs> but all the nine hundred fifty, of course, are also thinking that they're going to be rich fast. At the end, they are there with the empty pocket, and the fifty actually were the ones who really got rich. Okay, so it's a it's a probably a chance of uh, uh, of 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 zero point five percent or five percent actually in this case, or five percent or three percent or two or whatever, where then somebody really has the get rich fast thing. Uh, again, always at the cost of the others, because if you are the addresser, that if you are hearing all those people, yeah, you can become rich fast and so on. You are the bait. <laughs> you are you are the person from whom they actually take the money. <laughs> so so because it doesn't exist. I've never seen it that you can get rich fast for a long period of time unless you cheat people. Okay, so that's the truth. Because somewhere the money has to come from. <laughs> it, uh, it's it's a pyramid uh, system, right? By definition, there is a limited amount of money. So somebody is going to have less at the end, and somebody is going to have more. Full stop. Because it's, it's not created from nothing, um, okay. even even not in crypto. So. What's the tip here? The tip is this: Well, either you go this, and you hope that you're one of the of the of the five or the whatever percent, um, and the other one is you try to solve a real problem. Uh, mm. Because if you solve a real problem, um, and I know that's tough, that's a tough question to ask, um, then actually you do have a business. And if you solve a real person's problem, people are always willing to pay for it. Um, and uh, until you have not solved a real world problem, well, then you're just perhaps building some features or whatever. But there's enough big problems out there that can be solved where people have um, a, a need for it. So I always recommend start. So, so number one is do something what you really like because life is short and, and uh, you should only do what you really like. Number mm -hmm. two, um, try to find a, a real problem that you're trying to solve where you know eventually people um, are willing to pay money. And number three, you know that you're onto something if you're growing without spending a dime on marketing. Because if you only if, if it only works if you if you continuously have to significantly spend a lot of money on marketing, well then you know well I don't really have a business. I'm I'm basically just living on on a drug, which is okay. Pay more money for marketing, and then I hope there's more users and more users. But if you have something which is really good, then actually it it, it it's going to fly by itself. Absolutely, Gerald, and it was really a pleasure hosting you on Voice of Crypto and. Listening to your incident and what you're building is, is truly amazing. I think this will have mass adoption, although you will not admit it, but I would really benchmark Google as, as something where the will would eventually reach. And I wish all the best to the team and the product. Any last word which you'd like to say to our viewers here? 
Well, I mean, uh, I think uh, everybody who is listening to this is in the right industry or actually is, is interested in the right industry. I think that's a great, a great, a great, a great first step. Um, it's, it's never too late to enter a, a new technological development. Uh, and we are still at the very early beginning. Um, and I always tell people this, if you want to do a business now, do it actually in, in blockchain or, or in Web3 or in AI, because there's so many opportunities at the moment and rather do it earlier than later. But by the way, because if you're in the industry, you're going to meet a lot of people, you're going to build a network, essentially, you're going to create value, you're going to make all the mistakes, what the other people are going to do much later. Um, okay. And this is here to stay. So I'm 100% convinced uh, that uh, going into this industry and actually just making the move is the right thing for everybody who wants to be an entrepreneur um, and, uh, and wants to be successful in the long term. Thanks very much. Thank you, Gerald. And thank you all of you for this podcast. And I'll be back with an interesting guest next time. Till that time, keep listening to Voice of Crypto.